There it goes. Oh yeah, just beautiful. Hey, this is Dave from ERC, and I want to talk about controlling the lights on your night radian with a switch on your radio, like I'm doing right now. I can flip between the different patterns remotely. You see, the stock radian doesn't come with any way to do that. You have to just change the buttons inside the plane before you fly. So, what I want to do is show you how to install a receiver control switch that so you can do that right from your radio while you're flying. Okay, so let's get started. So the first step to adding remote control to your night radian LED system is to remove the heat shrink off the button board. So what I'm going to do is just flip it over here and remove the heat shrink with an X-Acto knife. Just going to cut a line down the back of the board right here and remove this heat shrink. You can kind of get the knife underneath it once you've made the line and then you can use your fingers to just peel it right off. No problem. And there it is. So you can see the three buttons here and on the back that's what it looks like. So I've removed the harness from the radian glider. I just had to open up the hatch on the bottom of the glider unplug it and then pull it through the front. So here it is. Now I've got a multimeter set up here on the scale where I can check for shorts. So we know each button is connected to ground and that's usually along this side. Let's just check it out. Yep, so that's connected to ground right there. All these sides. So once you locate that you know that the other side goes to the chip and we can check that. Let's go to one button here. There you go. You can see that each button goes to one of the pins on the chip right here. Now I'm going to use one of these Turnergy receiver controlled on off switches to affect the closure of the button. Here's the Turnergy receiver controlled switch and what we need to do is put these two wires across the button and then the other side goes to the receiver right here to control it so that we can affect a button closure from our RC radio. So you can see I've taken the cover off the RC switch right here and exposed the inner components. And you might ask, why did I do that? Well, the reason was I wanted to put a wire from the output to the input here, or input to the output. And I'll explain why I had to do that. Right now I've just got a jumper on there for testing. And the other thing that you want to remember is there's uh, four jumper positions. And the one that works is this one right here with both jumpers are on like that. So make a note, put both jumpers on like that because that makes the switch work alternately. So when you throw the switch on your receiver back and forth, this will alternate between being shorted here and being open. Again, if you look on the back, you'll see on the plate that comes with it that there's a jumper settings right here. You want this one right here on off alternately like that. And this green stripe here represents the circuit board and these three dots are the little signal wire that comes off the circuit board just for orientation. So the reason you need a wire running from the input ground to one of these wires on the output is because you need a common ground. And I'll explain that. The ground is tied from this pin here, through the receiver, through the UBEC, to the battery, across to the other battery and over to the load. I found the easiest way was just to solder a wire to the input ground here, then run it to the pin that you want to use for ground on the button. Now it so happens that uh, on my board here, I decide to use this wire here for the ground on the button and then it's easy to run the wire from the ground on the input right here right around to that just a, a short path. So this other wire here is going to go to the high side of the button that's usually floating up around 3 volts so when the switch closes it'll pull that down to ground. 
So no floating grounds. You have to have a solid common ground from here over to here. Now the other reason I took the cover off it is I'm going to desolder these thick wires and put some thinner wires, probably uh, wires like for a servo like these here. So you could use three of the receiver control switches and control every one of the buttons, but I'm just going to go with one and put it on the forward button here so I can just step through all of the patterns. I can also probably set up something on the radio to pulse the button over and over to automatically just step through all of them like uh, you would do if you held both of these buttons down at once. It'll walk through all the patterns. That's what I can do from the radio, so I don't need to have two buttons to do that. I can set up the radio to do that. Alright, so let's go ahead and solder the receiver control switch onto the first button here, and then we'll give it a try. Okay, so I'm all done soldering, and this is what it looks like. I put the brown wire here from the ground on the input to this wire on the output, which is going to be the ground side of my button. Okay, and you look around here, that's the ground side of the button. Alrighty. Now this, where it's soldered here, this pad on the bottom is the same as this pad on the top. So the ground just comes from here over to here, runs through these pads over to here into the ground side of the button. Alright, the side that's going to be switched is this red wire here. You can see that's on the bottom soldered right there. And the red wire goes around to the positive side of the button right here and it's going to pull the three volts for the button low. And it'll act just like a button press. Oh, by the way, I noticed when I had this apart that the light controller for the Night Radiant is the SP002E. You can look that up on the internet and find all kinds of people that sell this board. Okay, there you go. Okay, now I'm just testing the boards to make sure they're working. And you can see I've got one light pattern there and then after a while it switches. Okay, there's a different pattern there. We got sort of yellow, red, purple, blue. It's just all, that's all one pattern there. It hasn't changed yet. Okay, now it's changed. You can see it's streaming across. And that's just because I have the servo tester here in auto, so it's sweeping back and forth. So every two times it sweeps, it changes the light pattern. It takes about eight seconds. But when we put it on the radio switch, we can make it go a lot faster than that. So I put a tie wrap right here to act as a strain relief so these wires won't pull off the buttons. And I'm getting ready to heat shrink it. I've got two pieces of heat shrink on the boards and I'm using this right here which is NTC 3 8 heat shrink. And it's clear. So I'm going to go ahead and take the heat gun and shrink these. Be back. So there's the finished job right there. I put the heat shrink on both boards. Then I just put some of this narrow packing tape around it to hold the two boards back to back. So that's a nice neat way to do it. And okay, let's go install it and see how it works. Okay, let's give it a test. I've got the switch on my Tyrannus radio programmed to do this. You can see channel 4 just moves up like that. And the RC control switch is hooked to channel 4 on my receiver. My receiver only has four channels, so that's where I put it. Actually it's on the rudder channel but I'm not using that channel. Okay and the switch I programmed in was this one right here. It's a momentary switch and you can see every time I switch it I get a different pattern and if I want to step through them fast I can. All I gotta do is do this. You can see every time I do that I get a different pattern So it doesn't take long to go through them that way, and it works good. On the Tyrannus, you can also program a switch that does this. When you toggle it, it changes the light pattern. Each time you toggle it, it changes the light pattern. But if you turn it all the way up and just leave it on, it'll automatically walk through the light patterns. This only uses one channel to do this, so it's similar to the other switch I showed you, but this has two functions, and it's done with a timer. 
So anyone that has a Tyrannus radio, I'll put up another video on how to do that, and I'll link it underneath this video in the description. Okay, I hope that helps. Now I just need to put this back inside the plane the way it was before, and we're good to go. That was a close pass.